Hello and welcome to Improv London's podcast in Chicago. My name's Ian McNaughton. I'm here with Stephen Davidson, as usual. Uh, we were going to record this in Chicago, but we got busy on the last day and didn't. So we're actually here in the new nursery training centre, which, for those of you who haven't visited and done decorating and stuff yet, uh, is looking really nice. And it's thanks to us and the other volunteers. So there. Buy us a beer, maybe. Okay, uh, let's get down to it. So this is week five of the intensive, uh, which is the final week. Last week we did Harold's, uh, and then this week went beyond that. So what did you do this week, Stephen? Um, We did a a handful of different forms, and then we did sort of make-your-own-form type thing, and we did some Harold's again. Nice. Who did you have for your class this week? I had Rance this week. Oh, Rance, who I had in week one. How did you find Rance? I quite liked him. Yeah, very uh, clear and on top of things. Cool. Uh, Yeah, my week was um, in some ways similar, but in many ways probably different, because I think each of the groups did different forms this week. So my group had Bill Arnett this week. Uh, who's well known to the May Days, and I think he's been over and done some workshops in Britain. I think you did one. Mm. Um, yeah, Bill's much uh, more laid back than Craig Euler, who I had last week, but incredibly knowledgeable uh, and loads of cool stuff that he shared. Uh, we did some different forms, so we did. Well, we did. We started off the week with some exercises, doing stuff like different ways to start scenes, slow and fast-paced scenes, and putting them into a form. Uh, we did a deconstruction, which was fun and well worth doing if you've not tried it. Uh, and we also did um, some more two provy stuff. Uh, so we tried doing some really organic two-person longer scenes uh, and we did, I'm forgetting the names of the formats we did. We did one that was a trio which I think is based on the form Bob Dassey and a couple of other people did um, where we played characters the whole time uh, but they kept coming out and doing monologues in character which was rather fun and we also did a weird ass and something else that I've forgotten, but I remember thinking I enjoyed it. Ah. So, uh, yeah, that was really fun. Oh, I know what we did, yeah, the one I'm thinking of, uh, was a shotgun. Um, which, do you know that one? No, go ahead. Uh, it's a really interesting one, um, and it's interesting because it, it's something that uh, Katie Klein in week three, I think it was, uh, said would be really fun to do and I, having done it now I agree it's basically four people in on a car journey which I think is where the shotgun shotgun for front seat or whatever um, and you basically just shoot the shit as I think somebody's called it before um, just talking about mundane life stuff and basically just nitpicking on other people's little mistakes uh, without being too bitchy and it's just people like you chat in a car on a long journey it sounds a bit like open roads uh that the nursery did last year oh okay i never actually saw that show so it was four people shooting the shit in a car so sounds like it was then <laughs> yeah uh, yeah we <laughs> we um we started to i think our suggestion was cheer pets which wasn't something i'd come across but apparently they're quite well known at least to the americans in my group it's a very specific i think 1990s america reference right um it's basically stuff where as far as i could tell it's basically cheer seeds stuck on a shape and they they yeah. grow it's like a terracotta and head basically and then there's sort of a textured bit where you can smush chia seeds and they grow on it and it looks like it has hair whoa and we we basically tore tore that apart for about 10 minutes uh and how shit it would look on dragon's den or actually (laughs) the american version shark tank because i think i was doing it with three americans uh and we did some fun things and then we got talking about christmas decorations and somebody in the group i think by mistake said she threw out her decorations every year uh, but we kind of ripped the piss out of her for five minutes about that and how it wasn't really very good for the environment and stuff. 
Uh, so that was rather fun. But yeah, it's been a fun week because there was lots of stuff going on and lots of different formats to try. Uh, and then that all culminated with uh, the group showcases, which ran over Wednesday and Thursday evenings. So what did you do for your show? Uh, our group of 16 split into two groups of eight, and my group of eight decided to do a herald for our performance. Cool. Right, and how did that go? I think it went quite well. Um, I, I don't know that I would say it was the ultimate herald, but it was a very I.O. herald, and everybody did it sort of correctly, and it was satisfying in that oh, sense. Cool. You know, we took time for the scenes, the first beats were mm -hmm. organic, everything all kind of lined up, everyone got roughly equal stage time. I feel like as a class show, it was very successful. Mm -hmm. um, and China came back stage afterwards and was very complimentary. Oh, so that's good. Kind of nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I did actually see the show, to be honest, but I thought I'd let you explain it. Um, yeah, my, my group did it a bit differently because each, each group kind of made, made their own choices uh, according to how the group felt. And there were a fair few of us who were keen to do a Harold. Uh, and at one point we were talking about half was who wanted to do the Harold doing the Harold and the other half doing something else. But then we decided we kind of wanted to play together as well. So mm -hmm. Bill came up with a format for us, uh, which somebody described as a monolith, but I couldn't find any reference to that on the Internet. And Bill hadn't used that term. Um, but we basically... Um, we didn't really split into two teams of eight, even within the 16. We kind of just did it whoever went for it first. We we had eight of us decide to do the opening off the suggestion, which was Puppet. Um, and then we came up with a location from that. And then the other eight in the group um, did some long, slow, organic scenes based on that. Uh, and then we kind of flipped that. The guys who've been doing scenes did a similar opening for us. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we did some long organic scenes, and then at the end we tied it together with a big sort of fast callback tag run type thing mm -hmm. at the end with all six in of us. So we kind of stopped it getting too chaotic on stage for most of it, uh, but yet we still got to play with two eights mixed. Oh, that's lovely. I feel like 16 people could very easily just be a clusterfuck, so well done for having it not be one. Yeah, I mean, we it kind of evolved, because at one point we were thinking of all doing it, and then we were like, this is getting an absolute, yeah, an mm -hmm. absolute clusterfuck, so we kind of, well, Bill, I think, came up with this idea of splitting it the way I just described. Uh, which worked really well. Um, on the night, it didn't actually go quite as well, um, because uh, I think I was in the group who did the first opening um, and we kind of didn't really generate a location. We came up with Dark Side, which is a little bit vague and not really a location like a hospital or a library or anything, which was the intention. Um, but we had talked about that and uh, sort of discussed how it was then important for the people in the scenes to nail down what the location was. But hey, we, we screwed up. Um, and we had sort of talked in at quite great length about if they were going to be organic, meaningful scenes, how um, we weren't going to have any walk-ons uh, unless the scene absolutely demanded it. Whereas in practice, that did happen, which I think took some of the emotional mm. depth out of it. Um, I think we kind of sorted that out a bit in the second half when uh, my half of the 16 were doing their scenes and then things seemed to go more how we planned but yeah I think we felt we screwed up and not done the best show we could uh, well, I mean in some ways it doesn't matter and yeah we had China came back and she basically said basically told us what we already knew that we kind of you know don't be in such a rush to pile onto the stage and stuff uh, but she did say my scene was wonderful uh, which was rather nice, and of course thanks to my scene partner too. And I, I was was really pleased with the scene coming off stage. So it was nice that Charlie recognised that. So, uh, but yeah, there were there were nine groups doing shows. Uh, many of them, as with Stephen's group, split in two uh, and did two 20, 25 minute shows. So it's quite a lot of shows to watch, even over two evenings. So uh, yeah, it was quite a busy week. Yes. 
I was quite glad we got our show out of the way on Wednesday, although it meant we were a little bit more rushed to get the show sorted. Uh, Thursday we were all a bit more chilled out and we did look and hung over um, and did did loads of forms and some really cool scenes and stuff uh, and different formats like the shotgun we talked about earlier. So uh, that was really good. Uh, any particular the improv lessons from this week? Um, there were some forms that I hadn't done, mm. which were really exciting, and I think I'd like to play with a bit more now that we're in London. Yeah, I don't know that I had a profound revelation, but it was good fun, mm. uh, and I'll take that. Yeah, I, I mean, I came back with much the same. There's, there's some really interesting forms I'd not come across, and I, I'd very much like to carry on playing with back in London and stuff. Um, Bill had some really interesting things to say, which maybe wasn't totally new, but made me look at things in a new way about um, how a lot of improv formats uh, are about kind of idea generation in the opening uh, and then exploring it. And then as you use up the material, you kind of refuel by playing another group game or doing another monologue if it's something like an Armando. Yeah. Uh, which I thought was rather a nice way to look at it and actually I started thinking about how in scenes if you're just yesing rather than yes ending you're kind of just depleting that store of things without adding to it Rich. I like that, especially the thing about energy I mean, because even the Herald originally, the group games were like literally short form games mm. and designed to get That's the energy right. back up, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, to re-engage the audience and make sure the performers were all jumping in and enthusiastic. So I like having that as sort of a safety mechanism that we're sort of explicitly saying, okay, if we need energy, this is the thing to do. Yeah, I remember Craig talking about that last week and how, yeah, just what yeah. you said. Uh, yeah. And how then, I think he said it was Kim... Kim Howard Johnson, who's one of the three authors of Truth in Comedy. He couldn't be sure he was the first person to do it, but he said that was the first time he'd seen somebody do anything other than a short form game, and he just did a, a flapping eagle type thing, which is probably a bit, a bit your cliche, wanky uh, group game type thing. Uh, yes. Now, but that was the first one, and it must have been quite revolutionary at the time. It sounds like it would do the trick energy-wise, though. Yeah. I feel like it's just nice to know why you're doing stuff like group games. Because I think I've done Harold with sort of UCB and the FA. Mm. And they teach group game. And they teach a bunch of ways to approach group game. But they never really say why you do a group game. Yeah. So I like that the FA is more, or that um, IO is more explicit. Yeah. Um... I mean, that was kind of the historic perspective, but I, I think it's it's for that thing that Bill said about replenishing the pot of yeah. ideas to explore, which is rather yeah. cool. Or like as a second and third beat of the opening, which mm. just format-wise makes me happier. Yeah, no, I, 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 I do enjoy the FA style stuff, but I think I feel more... More the IO. The IO star is probably more where my heart lies, if that doesn't sound too pretentious. It <laughs> does. I don't care. Go ahead uh, and be pretentious. Yay. Uh, what shows did you see this week? Uh, oh, I saw piles of shows. Student shows. I saw Shakespeare, which was really lovely. Oh, cool. Um, I think my favorite one I saw that week was Messing with TJ. Oh, tell so, us about that. Yeah, TJ Jagodowski that. did yeah, Messing sure. with a Friend with Susan Messing uh, at the Annoyance. It was lovely. Um, they suited each other really well, actually. TJ played like TJ in that hmm. it was sort of that slow Bernie paying a lot of attention to your partner, yeah. finding stuff, like classic IO style. Hmm. But he was really quite filthy in a way that sort of felt like he was making a, I don't want to say concession, <laughs> uh, he was aware of who he was playing with and where and fit himself in in a really masterful way. Nice, nice. Yeah, it was interesting because I think I mentioned on last week's podcast I saw him do all caps, which is basically where they do scenes off a rant from an audience member. Uh, yeah, and he really adapted. Cause, and my first thought was that's kind of not what I'm used to seeing TJ doing and 
I think I stand by that, that TJ yeah. just adapted because he's a brilliant improviser. I feel like that more than anything else is what I would say makes somebody a really good improviser, though, because it's very easy to stay mm. in one style and get really good at it, but be useless everywhere else. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, TJ's definitely adaptable. Yeah. And, and he said hello to me this week, so wow. I'm rather... I'm just, I was, I was like, oh, there's TJ at the end of the corridor. And as I walked past, he was like, oh, hi. And I was like, oh, how do you know? Well, he probably doesn't know who I am. But hey, it, it was a moment of it's a pleasant surprise. Uh, I, I didn't see as many shows this week as usual. Cause, um, two, well, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't see so many of the sort of known groups because two evenings of the week I was uh, watching the student showcases, mm-hmm. uh, which were all really fun. Um, I saw Crab Atlanta, um, who I've been told were pretty weird, and I would agree they were pretty weird. Um, kind of, I didn't feel I really got any joy out of the fact uh, that they were doing weird stuff, which I thought I might do. It just seemed ah. a bit weird for the sake of weird, but maybe that was just me. Oh, wow. Well. Because uh, normally I like weird, but hey. Um, and I saw Superhuman again. Uh, who I think I saw, yeah I saw the previous week, uh, and I I wasn't really that impressed. I was like oh, I could take them or leave them, but I saw them this week supporting uh, Holly the Rent and Katie Rich, I think it is, uh, and I really enjoyed their their set. So nice, that was cool. And then you you were at Holly and Katie, I think, weren't you? Yes, I was at Holly and Katie, and and this, the list goes on for that week. Yeah, for the whole week. They, they were really cool. Uh, I think they normally out at, in the um, I.O. West, uh, and they'd come back, uh, as had Cook County and Dummy a couple in the last few weeks. But, yeah, I really enjoyed that. Uh, that was fun. And, of course, I saw Three Pete again. Yeah, oh, me too. Classic. I love Three Pete. They're definitely my favourite group. Out yeah, there. mine too. Um yeah, they, they did something a bit different this week because um, the monologue was about somebody who used... One of them apparently used to compete in some sort of wrestling league. Yes. And he's quite a small... He's probably the smallest one of three, P. Definitely the smallest of the men, though. So. In fairness, I think the monologue was mostly about how shit he was at it. That, that, yeah, that is true. <laughs> but uh, when he sort of introduced her, I was like, why would you even think of doing that? <laughs> Look at you! Yeah. Because yeah, you're, you're, I don't know, five foot six or something, are you? I don't know, but I feel like in wrestling they put you roughly with people your same size. Yeah, maybe. I'm sure that's a thing. I think it was a fairly, like, local league wrestling yeah. as well, rather than the big on-TV stuff. Uh, but anyway, that led to them doing some amazing combat scenes that just look really well choreographed. I mean, I don't think they were choreographed. I think they're just very good at what they do. They, I think, yeah, they've just taken the time to rehearse stage combat yeah. and we're all happy with being thrown around. Yeah, uh, so that, that was super fun, a bit different. They, they did all the stuff they usually did, which is really fun. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think there's just a lot of trust on that team as well. I'd agree, yeah. I, oh, who was it? We saw a group earlier in the week where somebody was picked up and clearly wasn't happy about it and oh I remember uh, yeah was that Deep Schwa I think that might have been Deep Schwa um, yeah but he was lifted up above people's heads and then up above the doors on the set that, that was Deep Schwa and yeah, sort that... of left with not very much support yeah that that was I think his name's Brett Lyons yeah uh, he's Probably one of the shorter members of the team. Yeah. Uh, but even so, the doors are, well, like normal doors you'd find in a room. So he's seven feet yeah. plus in the air. So uh, Craig Eulier ran around the back, stood on a chair, and was going to try and catch him by yeah. himself standing on a chair. And I just thought, yeah. oh, I don't want to watch someone <laughs> yeah, snap their go back. But I, then they just got him down again. They did get him still. down, but yeah, that, that looked a bit <laughs> edge of the seat stuff. You could really tell that... Three Pete was a lot more comfortable being physical with mm. each other, and everyone looked completely fine with being picked up and thrown around and slapped. Yeah. And, and they did really play with the yeah. doors and it the windows more fun and the to watch, set. Oh, it was so much fun to watch. Yeah, it was like it was like somebody would burst through the door and immediately you get a chair swung at them. Exactly. Right. And like, how do you know they're coming through the door? It was just incredible. Yeah. That's so so much fun. Um. 
But it, it, it was fun because they looked like they were having fun. I think in Deep Schwa, where he was picked up, he didn't look like he was having fun. He didn't. He was like, oh no. my god, what's going to happen? Am I going to die? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that was really fun. Um, what else did we do this week? Yeah, it was a lot of different formats, which was fun. And I am looking forward to um, doing some of those around London, too. So that's the end of the five weeks. So I thought it would be an idea to think about the five weeks and any particular things that kind of you take from the whole program. Any thoughts on that? Oh. Um, I mean, since you've already started us off being pretentious. Uh, Join me. <laughs> I feel like... <laughs> the big thing I gained was confidence that I already kind of knew what I was doing, if you know what I mean. Uh-huh. Um, I think it wasn't until week five there was anything I hadn't already done before or didn't think I was doing an all right job of, which was kind of nice. I think a different person might have been frustrated that they weren't getting thrown around and challenged and new stuff all the time. But I feel like just... The, the reps and the practice and the assurance that I get it mm. was kind of nice. Um, just to play with people from all over the world and know that the vocabulary works with them and that I was fine in a scene with all kinds of people who had all different experience levels and styles mm. and approaches. And mm. it was always fine. Uh, that was really nice. And I think seeing how well put together the syllabus is and how it's taught was really nice just pedagogically. I mm. think a lot of the notes that I took actually were more about how stuff was being taught and how the class was responding. So I feel like just in terms of teaching, that was a really nice uh, starting at the beginning, going all the way through, yeah. seeing how they put it together. You can really tell that they put a lot of thought into why every exercise is there. Yeah, I, I felt that too. It was, uh, I mean, I'd done pretty most of the exercise before there. There were a few different mm -hmm. ones. But yeah, it did all hang together pretty well. Um, I perhaps wonder if it was being taught, you know, as three hours a week over eight weeks, if you might get a bit keener to do some stuff on scenes before level three. But Yeah. Um, for us, it worked, seemed to work fine. We did do some scenes before that, but. I think it's designed for people who've never improvised before, though. Right. So I wouldn't necessarily say that jumping into scenes was the very best thing, because yeah. I feel like there's a lot of sort of basic skills that you forget that you have once you've been playing for a while. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Do you know what so, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, d I did think, certainly the way we, we were doing it the first week was really good for getting us working together as a group. Yeah. Um, cause I, yeah, we, I mean, I knew Emily, Emily Murphy, who was in my group, but apart from that, the other 14 people I'd never met before. So, yeah. uh, and we all gelled really quickly and spent a lot of time drinking and eating lunch and stuff as yeah. well. So, uh, but I think the exercise really helped with that, uh, which, which, um, you know, helped when we came to do the scenes. Um, as far as overall things, I've, I think I've mentioned this before, but yeah, I think I've come back uh, feeling a lot more like attacking improv. I think I'd got into a bit of a tentative headspace where I maybe thought too much uh, about how to start a scene or when to come on for a scene and stuff, whereas now I'm getting much, I'm back to being much more just getting on and doing what needs doing and stuff, which is a good thing to have, I think. So that's really good. Uh, it feels like a very North American approach to be front-footed like that. Yeah. Which is probably an interesting thing to bring over. Because mm. I think if you overdo that in the British scene, people will maybe perceive you as pushy. Yeah, yeah. But then you kind of just have to at some point. Yeah, I think I'm, when I said I've got it back, I think I'm probably... I don't want to use the word pushy, but yeah, I'm more front-footed than I was even yeah. at any point in my improv career air quotes before yeah. even when I was feeling more confident I would definitely say the same and I think 
just seeing how people play at a high level in Chicago also has a lot to do with that because it's so easy to feel like, especially if there are people in the group not getting a lot of stage time, it's easy to hold yourself back because you think, oh no, I should leave a beat or two so that so and so can jump in if they yeah. need a spot. But actually, there are other ways to work them in consciously rather than just not doing anything. And I think that was a really useful lesson in going ahead and being as aggressive as the piece needs you to be yeah. and just finding other ways to not be an asshole about it. Yeah. Uh, and I think you can do both because in the workshop I did with Craig, which I think I mentioned on last week's podcast, when we did the beer sharp mice format, he did talk about, you know, if somebody's not be, been on much, yeah. don't tag them out straight away, tag the other person out. Yeah. Um, and they'll stay on for a few scenes. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays when now we're back in Britain doing scenes over here and do people think we're pushy assholes <laughs> or, or what? I even use the American assholes there. Yeah. Asshole. I mean, I've got this charming North American accent, so I guess people will just assume that I'm an asshole anyway, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> Have you done any improv since you've been back? No, you haven't, because you only got back yesterday, didn't you? I have, actually. I did oh, a show okay. last night. I got off the plane and Bloody had a tour and happened. Because my and group had a run in the Camden Fringe. Oh, of course, yeah. Uh, right. Yes. And, and it was short form, though. Yet, so? It was a short form show, though, so you can be as pushy as you want, really, because there's a structure. I'm not sure. I haven't got any lined up yet. I'm, I'm, well, I, I'm going to go and do something on the 1st of September, but I hope I do something before then. I have to do a drop in at the nursery or something. Nice. And be a pushy asshole or something. Do Hopefully it. not. <laughs> uh, would you would you go to Chicago again? Yes. Next. Actually, that's sort of <laughs> two questions in one. Because uh, a, I kind of mean if if we hadn't gone this, would you recommend going? Sort of thing. Would Are I recommend going on this five week thing? Yeah. I would actually. I think it's easy if you're quite experienced to think, oh, no, I don't need to go back and do it from point A. But pedagogically, I would say, even if you're really good, go ahead and see how they've organized their syllabus. Yeah. Uh, just straight up, it's really well done. Um, and I think just doing all of the reps and playing with people from all over and seeing shows at such a high level and that are so diverse in their approaches is really, really valuable no matter who you are. I think if you're a complete beginner, you've been playing for five years, you're completely uh, equally going to get lots out of it. I'd, I'd agree. I mean, I mean, I didn't do a survey, but just from the people I spoke to, I think probably the vast majority of people there have done quite a bit of improv before. Yeah. Um, I think my group, yeah, in my group, there was nobody who hadn't done the improv. I think there were a couple of people who'd done about under a year. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we ranged all the way up to a couple of people who'd done it for about nine or ten years uh, mm -hmm. and everywhere in between. My group was similar. There were two people who hadn't done an improv really before, but they did both have drama degrees. Oh, okay. Um, so they were comfortable being up on stage and playing scenes and doing character work and all of that right, stuff. So right. it took a lot of difficulties that people have at first out of the equation. Yeah, yeah, that's true, I guess. I mean, you probably do. Most drama schools do something, anyway. I feel like a five-week intensive is a funny thing to sign up for if you've never done improv before, but... Yeah, if you don't like it, you kind of... Yeah. Particularly if you come from abroad, you've spent quite a lot of money. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, what with the flying and the somewhere to stay, it's uh, it's not the cheapest thing in the world to do. No. But uh, I'm glad I did it too. Yeah. Uh, and I guess the other part of the question is, is about, you know... Now we've done that, do you want to go back to Chicago and do some more? Or Absolutely. I think the advanced intensive, uh, if I can afford it, is definitely on the books for next year. Uh, depends how well the pound is doing by then, I guess. Yeah, that, I was glad I decided to pay for the intensive in one shot rather than wait to pay the rest off last minute. Cause that... Yeah, I was pleased to have paid a lot of stuff before the pound dropped as well. Oh, yeah, the groceries still were yeah, I mean, oh, so much more than they really needed to be. Yeah, groceries was funny because like things like blueberries were dirt cheap, 
but some things were more expensive. Yeah. But yeah, probably uh, if the pound hadn't dropped, I'd have spent 150, 200 pounds less. So yeah, uh, that's not nothing. It's it's not trivial, but uh, yeah, that wasn't a decision within my control sadly uh yeah i'd love to go back and do the advanced intensive uh that's uh a two-week thing it's I think, or... maybe going to be three weeks next year right Rats, uh, was saying last year it was two weeks and they were five day weeks uh whereas our intensive was four day weeks with uh sort of a three-day weekend and a lot of the feedback that they got from people who did it this year was that they'd much rather have three four-day weeks so they have a little bit more time uh-huh. and a bit of downtime in between. Uh, so either two or three weeks of early next summer, there will be an advanced intensive. Right. Yeah, because uh, my feeling on the stuff we did this, I mean, when I... Week one, I was like, oh, why don't we have this five days a week? And then I quickly got into the stage where I really did value the downtime. I was glad to have Friday, Saturday and Sunday off rather than just Saturday and Sunday. Well, and I think if you're ambitious, there are lots of other improv things you can do. Like Mm. IO did lots of one-day workshops, but also you can arrange with a group of people to have a workshop every day of the week if you wanted one. Yeah, totally. Um, Emily arranged that one at... The annoyance. The annoyance yeah. um, there was a huge group of players this year over from Poland. I think there was 15 or 16 of them, and they all organized workshops all over the place with basically every big name in Chicago. They had yeah. a day-long workshop workshop with on their days off. So they were exhausted by the end of the five weeks, but wow, were they efficient. Yeah, yeah, we had, uh, we had one Polish person in my group called the Nieska, although I think there were at least three of Nieska mm-hmm. in Chicago. Uh, and we had somebody from Bulgaria and somebody from Hungary, an Australian, two people from London, uh, quite a few Americans, uh, and I can't remember, I've got a feeling there was somebody else as well I forgot to mention. But, uh, yeah, it, it's a real melting pot of people who all just came together and just got on and had a shit ton of fun doing improv yeah yeah, um, yeah what the way the imp- the IO stuff structured for those who don't know is they have levels 1, 2 and 3 and then level 4 and 4B and that's basically what we've been doing so we basically do a level a week mm-hmm. uh, but beyond that there's level 5 and level 5B and I'm imagining that's going to be the st- stuff in the advanced intensive yeah Rance was saying that it's 5 and 5B, and a little bit of a repeat of 4, which was the Herald. So oh, they do okay. a little bit more Herald in depth, and then uh, more of the making up your own form right. type stuff. Yeah. Oh, that sounds really cool. Yeah. I definitely want to do that next year, but again, it's the money that's making me hesitate. Because I wow. think while I'm over, because one of my regrets from this year was that I had hadn't allowed time to go anywhere else in America, mm. which was partly due to practical nature of getting, because I thought I was going to have to do this all on manual leave at one point, mm. so I kind of like do the thing and then come straight back to work. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, if I go go to Chicago again for two or three weeks, whichever it is, I think I'd like to allow a couple of weeks to uh, go to New York and also down to Austin and see the people who do stuff with P-Graph. Yes. Because that sounds like a really good improv community and stuff, mm-hmm. and it'd be great to see those people again. I might bump into Mark Tindall while we're down there. <laughs> okay. He is perpetually there. He is perpetually. In fact, I'm not sure why he hasn't moved. The, probably immigration control. It's really actually. hard to immigrate can, to America. Yeah. 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 It's uh, not a sensible system, but anyway. Yeah. Uh, do you have any regrets from this year? Uh, I mentioned my slight regret there, although it's a pretty small one. um, I think if I did it again, I would stay closer to IO. Right. Because although I loved our apartment and the size and the price, uh, there were definitely some late night shows that I would have done if I could have gotten home cheaply from them. But for me, having to Uber home uh, if I wanted to stay was... Uh, often a deciding factor in missing out on midnight shows. Yeah, I didn't do any midnight shows either, and it it was partly yeah the the same 
thing that Stephen just described. Um, I mean, we did see a lot of shows, but there were some on that. I think 11.55 or midnight that yeah. I just didn't fancy and it would have meant an Uber or similar. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. And what 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 are your thoughts now you're back in Britain on starting improv again? Anything you particularly want to bring back and start over here or anything? I mostly want to keep the pace up of doing improv every day. Mm. Um, and I think the other thing I really liked was the amount of effort being put into diversity in Chicago, I really, really like that. Um, Tara DeFrancisco Tara, runs yeah. a, a week, monthly jam called the, the Jam for women and GLBTQ, etc. people. Yeah. And three feet do a diversity jam, and there's just mm-hmm. all kinds of stuff all over uh, to encourage people. Uh, and I feel like people play differently when they feel really comfortable and welcomed places and that's something really lovely that I took back particularly from the 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 jam I think Tara did a workshop at the beginning and it's free and open to anyone so anyone who wants to do uh, a free workshop with Tara de Francisco can go along to that jam uh and just the way she teaches and the energy she puts into it was really really warm and welcoming and I felt like the scenes and the style of play in the jam were very just nice if you know what I mean I feel like a lot of the time in an open public jam the people who put their names in are the people who think they're really clever and funny and tend to be really front-footed and pushy right right that's a wild generalization but I've seen a lot of terrible jams and the ones aimed specifically at diversity, I feel like had a better quality oh, because okay. that guy was not who they were aimed at. Wasn't there one of them where somebody put three cards in there, didn't you say? Yeah. Uh, wasn't, maybe, maybe that wasn't a diversity one, I can't remember. That was, it was Three Pete's Diversity Jam. Yeah. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. Slightly I mean, cheeky, but oh well. I meant to come along and see that. Uh, but I, yeah, I think that was the night I was just exhausted and I went home, which yeah. was a shame. And I, I think I was watching something else while Tara's one was on mm. as well. I think I was, can't remember what I was watching now. I was watching something downstairs. Uh, so yeah, and Tara and Rance are setting up their own theatre, which is really yes. cool. The next, so that In Ohio, was it? I think so, yeah. I've got to think it's it Columbus, right. Ohio, but that doesn't really mean much to me. No. But yeah, I think that would be really cool. Lucky Ohio. Yeah, I I only did one workshop with Tara, but I just thought, yeah, she's really good, and I very much enjoyed Rants in week one, yeah. so... That should be good. Uh, what else? Anything else to talk about while we're here? No, it might be time for... Tupperware Corner. Very nice. Any yeah. Tupperware news this week, then, Steve? Alas, I have failed to find any Damn. Tupperware news this week. I actually use my Tupperware box for a non-lunch-based activity. What? <laughs> uh, I, I had a not insignificant amount of American money to bring back uh, that I didn't mean to be hyper-organised and spend. But I had several dollars worth of American coins, so I put them in my Tupperware box. Wow. And bought them back. Nice. So there. Yeah. Uh, a lot of grocery stores in America have sort of coin machines where you can just throw all your change in and they give you credit for the store. No, you tell me. Actually, that wouldn't be any good, having credit for a store. Oh, well, I mean, like, credit for Whole Foods, you could just buy some brownies. True. I could, yeah. Unless too late now. But too late now. Well, there are Whole Foods in next time. Britain. But that the group. Whole Foods in Britain do not have the same brownies as the Whole Foods in America. Okay. Trust me, my friend, I have checked. I shall have to go back to America just to <laughs> spend my $3 of American shame. Yes. Nothing to do with improv at all. But I, I, ha- I have a new feature, which, which, is, which is the Tupperware Top 3. Oh, wow. Well, let's hear it. Straight in at number three. It's going to be straight in because it's the first week we've done this. Mm-hmm. 
living in a box by living in a box. Oh, it's a song. It's, it's a, a song, song about Tupperware. Yeah, that's sort of Tupperware. Let's be specific. Top three songs about Tupperware, yes? I'm, in theory, yes, but it does feature the lyric, I'm living in a box, I'm living in a cardboard box, which probably, if I'm being strict, cancels out it being Tupperware. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Number two, I'm going to go for Living in the Plastic Age by The Buggles, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which I think fits. And at number one, uh, and I, I search for this just a bit of a joke, uh, is a song called Container Love by Philip Boa and the Voodoo Club. I think it was Philip Boa. It might have been Stephen Boa. But anyway, check it out. It's on YouTube. Um, is it a good song or is it just funny because it's about Tupperware? I, I didn't think it was that good, but it, <laughs> it's obviously about Tupperware uh, and the love of containers. Right. So, uh, but I did find, while I was searching, I, I did find Tupperware Remix Party. Wow. Uh, which I think I sent you the link to. Uh, they seem to be a bit of a slightly weird... Uh, well, they basically do remixes, and they're sort of a bit like uh, Daft Punk meet Tupperware. Mm-hmm. Um, or something like Gwar, who won Eurovision a few years ago. And look, they're all dr- dressed in weird costumes and make weird music. But can, mm-hmm. go, and, go and check that out, because uh, that's obviously really, but really what you want to do with your music, is have it based upon Tupperware. <laughs> Uh, right. How are we doing for time? Right. Um. Yeah, that's about all my stuff I could vaguely shoehorn under the category of Tupperware. <laughs> well done. Uh. So I think with that, it might be time to bring down the bendy airtight plastic lid on Tupperware Corner. Yes, and on our podcast series, this will be the last one. And on our podcast series. Unless we both end up on the advanced one next year. That's true. We could do so we'll watch out. Yeah, or if Stuart wants to interview us or anything. Uh, we shall see. But we'll leave that up to Stuart. But uh, yeah, well, thanks to list for listening uh, to our series, assuming you have and haven't just tuned in for this one. Um, yeah, I've really enjoyed doing it. It's been a lot of fun and uh, been, been kind of helped me reflect on mm-hmm. in a ped- pedagogic man- manner. I never could pronounce that word, and I used to be a teacher, which, so I should be able to. Minor uh, detail. Minor detail. I'll go for andragogic instead. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Ah. Right, we'll bid you goodbye then, and thanks for listening. <laughs> Bye. Max Improv! <laughs>